I don't know if you've got any questions. I'm not a very good public speaker, so I'm not going to do a... But you can ask anything. We can talk about anything. I just... Have you compiled like, the whole list of the questions? Okay. That's, no, no, that's good. <laughs> I'm good with that. Okay. The colors that uh, goes down uh, is the trip. Yes, is it accidentally or? It is. It's part of the paint. When I'm okay. painting, it but happens. Because you don't wait that the colors dry. Yeah, they just okay. fall. Yes. They happen. No, because also in Max Ernstein, in the Peggy Wuggen, there is a lot of this example. So I Tripping. That, I yes. like, I like it. Well, I don't even like them. They just happen. And then I don't like to get, I don't. Yes. Sometimes too much on the, so I lay them flat. Okay, Mol's my niece, and she's here with me. She's coming, um, so you'll see her tonight. <laughs> about that tall, um, she's 16, going on 17, and um, I've been painting her since she was a baby. And uh, yeah, I paint my family quite a lot. And this group of paintings started with that painting, which um, is about two years old, and it's from a show I did in Finland. And then I made this group. I'm not, I'm not great at <laughs> You're going to have to ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. I don't choose the facial features, she has them. Um, no, no, I'm not being sarcastic. Um, um, yeah, that's a hard question. I suppose they seem to come naturally, like that's more with the cat she has, and that's more at a place we were staying on holiday. And I like, I mean, it's complicated. This is based on a monk painting of puberty, so I asked her to sit on the edge of the bed because I love that painting and I wanted to think about what it was like to be 16 and stuff. Um, that comes from a Manet painting, the, the repose. I was thinking about where she's kind of like that. Um, yeah, so they all come from kind of different Um, I suppose they've grown up as she's grown up and she's gone from being a kind of um, solitary toddler to being, I suppose, a solitary adult. Not adult, she's not an adult. And she, yeah, that's a hard Do you think you're going to stop painting her at any point? <laughs> probably not. I'll probably go on yeah. painting her. You guys are really close, like, family-wise. Yeah, yeah, we are very close family. I paint all my family. My daughter, who's here, is 10. I paint her. I was just seeing like the, the backgrounds of the paintings are all green. Yeah, um, the ground. Yeah, comes, what, what was the reason for that? What did you it came from thinking about Degas, who painted his grounds apple green, and I've been thinking a lot about him. And it's really exciting where you get little bits of green coming through, what it does yeah. to the. I always have a coloured ground. Provisional painting. Yeah, where it's like unfinished sometimes, you have like things peeking out like this and drips and like very casual painting, um, which I know is very popular, at least in my school. And I'm wondering, do you know anything about it or like how has the trends in painting changed since you were working? Uh, I don't know, I've never heard of that expression. <laughs> um, uh, I suppose when I started, it probably wasn't that popular at the time, wasn't it? Um, 
late 80s, early... Well, I mean, I suppose it was. There were places where it was and places where it wasn't. Um, I think I've never thought that much about the trends in painting. Um, um, but it's also, sorry, it's like uh, you were featured in the show called The Death of the Death of Painting. <laughs> that's right. And for me, like that, I think that's really interesting to think about how painting remains relevant today. Yeah, oddly, I think it's getting more and more popular. Yeah, I think there's so a kind of, like Damien Hirst is making paintings, and everybody suddenly, yeah, which is quite nice, actually. Everybody sort of, it's like it, I always think it's a bit like poetry, it's like the ultimate. But I mean, I love painting, so I would think that. But there's something about being connected with history and going back so far, and then, I don't know, that's a kind of endless, there's something very beautiful about that. You mentioned Damien Hirst or any other contemporary artists, I mean, British or, or otherwise, that you draw influence from are, are more drawn to maybe. You know, it's just like, um, just trying to think. I love Peter Doig, I love Marlene Dumas, I love Luke Toymans, I love, you know, I, I um, painting Yeah, I love painting, I love the stuff of paint, but there's so many I love, it's kind of hard to, but yeah. Do you make a photograph of the subject painting? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes I use magazines, sometimes I take photographs, and sometimes I have a model. In this case, uh, you make a direct portrait uh, of the subject. Uh, no, in this case, take photo. photo. Yeah. I think that we all are interested in the eye, in the eyes, yeah. in the eyes, because the, the look is very intense. Yeah. So, what? <laughs> um, it always seems to me when you look at a painting of a figure and they don't look at you or they don't have eyes, there's something missing, I suppose. I always feel like if they're looking away or if they've got their back to you or something, they always, the painting, you can't really relate to it as a person. You, you look for the eyes, I think. So were, were you trying to connect the more to the audience or trying to uh, start a relation, uh, like a communication thing? Yeah, I think so, yeah, very much. I want, I want you to feel what it's like to be more. And, Imagine what it's try like. Yeah, and make you want to look at her, mm -hmm. I suppose. Does the format, the, the large format, have something to do with that idea of trying to connect the audience with her and try to just? I can't, and this is truthful. I can't fit things on. I can either paint very small or very big. If it's in between, the head doesn't fit onto the. That's the truth. Mm -hmm because I think it's to do with your own human scale as well, because I'm quite long like that, and I think <laughs> I can paint like That's the honest truth. Have you been painting your family since the beginning, or um, is this a recent trend? No, since always. Since I was a little kid, I painted books of pictures of my family. Drew, not painted. And we used to, I always made paper dolls when I was a child, of the family and of all my friends and things. So they were people but cut out. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a serial, a serial thing with your family too? With your family too, as models? I mean, you paint them all every year? It's family. not set, but yeah, there's an ongoing, and I have painted my daughter since she was a baby, and so growing up, I like the continuity of that and like seeing I like looking at things like that, you know, that group of photographs of where he's photographed his sisters over 30 years. Do you know them? They're beautiful and they're them aging and changing. I can't remember his name, but mm -hmm. I like that sort of thing I like to look at. So it seemed other people would also be interested in that changing. How much time are you split between all four of these? Painting. Yeah. Probably only, that one is the oldest, and then this one, that one, that one. Maybe a month or two? Pretty close. Close, yeah. I, I read also an interview that you were interested to, into fashion, 
Uh, you did some portraits of some famous uh, people like Kit Mozart or Eric. What's the difference between painting them and painting more? Because you, you know, obviously, better your music. Yeah. I mean, I never, when I use magazines, I see them as kind of, I don't see them as the people they are. I always imagine, I don't know, some story, other story onto them, and I, I don't see them as celebrities. So for me, that's a kind of, it's an accidental maybe. I, I like magazines because they're like a ready source of people rather than, and they're really good photographs, very contrasting and everything. But not, I never think, oh, Kate Moss, I love her. I'd like to paint her so much, I think. I'm not really interested in fashion as a, mm -hmm. as a thing, as a. It's easier to paint woman because usually your subject is always woman and children. Yeah, I think you paint what you know, and that is what I know, because I am a woman, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been a child, and I think that is very simply why, because it's what I know, and it's very hard to paint what you are not. I think. I always think if I were a writer, I would like to be like John Updike, you know, everybody would like to be like John Updike, but because he, in a way, he doesn't imagine anything mostly, they're always his life transformed and that's the kind of painter I am, I can't, I don't have an imagination, so I have to use the real, and that's important. And going into that question, just feminism in general, Especially like Manet, I was just thinking about his own leaves, or not Manet, but uh, maybe it is Manet, as well as Matisse and uh, Andre, and yeah. all these great photo leaves portraits. Um, and I was wondering, like, as a female painter, do you think of it as, in a way, like reclamation of? I think I had a moment of thinking that when I was a student, I was using pornography a lot. And yeah, yeah. I was always putting my own face onto the women because I did, I thought I was saving them. I thought I was somehow going into the horror or something of it and saying, oh, this could be me. And, that could, and if it were me, what would that be like? And also making you look at them as if they were real again and somehow finding my way back to them. So I think that is true. But I think after a while, I didn't, that wasn't, so interesting to me anymore and I kind of I got lost in the painting and, and in yeah. and not thinking in such a kind of, like kind of yeah, yeah that became a bit literal mm -hmm. for me that kind of idea but at one point that was really important to say but then you moved away from it because it was just because you were interested in paint or like the idea that was wrong with it. I got repulsed by the images actually as well like I sort of got saturated by them and I couldn't bear them. Quite literally, I couldn't bear them. And now I look at them, the ones where I put my own face in them, and they're not very good paintings, and I look at them with a kind of horror. But they're, they're interesting because they're my history, but they're not, yeah, there's something hor horrific about them as well. Yeah. Are there any paintings that you're embarrassed at? That what? You're embarrassed at, like, I guess? Yeah, I think in a... Oh, there's lots of paintings I'm embarrassed <laughs> by. Um, a lot of paintings I hate. There's a lot of... Um, the pornography I'm not so much embarrassed by, I just look at it with a kind of horror. Mm -hmm. I have really do love your technique, how they choose to paint with oil and this kind of brush strokes um, regarding the way you paint. Well, there was a point when I left college, when I, it was very important to make the colour clean because I loved to paint and I was a naturally quite loose painter and I loved, I was painting my hair and all down and everywhere and I'm not a very tidy person so that was kind of part of it but it became very important to make everything clean and clear and not to, to hold on to the excitement but not let it to keep it clean, that was really important. So I had to teach myself with great laboriousness to keep the colour clean. So I'd always have stacks of paper plates and then I'd wash, which I still do, I wash my brushes every hour to keep the paint clean because otherwise you just end up with mud. And especially with oil, it's complicated. Yeah, it's hard so to keep it clean. Acrylics or maybe water 
I hate acrylic, I hate the touch of it, I hate the feel of it, I hate the smell of it. And it, it doesn't have any of the looseness. I love the oil, I love, yeah. That's a difficult question for me to answer. I think it has changed a lot. Um, there's whole periods. At the moment, I'm working on a group of self-portraits that are d very different. I think they're very different. I think they're not. You wouldn't go, oh, it's not by you. But it's really important to keep changing, to keep. Every day you begin a painting as if you could make any painting. That's really important. That each, and it's the only thing in a, in a way that gives you hope as an artist, that you get up in the morning and it could be different, because otherwise there wouldn't be any point, if that makes sense. Um, so you're doing self-portraits? Yeah, they're naked self-portraits. Um, I've done a lot of self-portraits. I like self-portraiture because it's a way of asking questions about yourself and both about painting, about yourself, about what's going on in your life, about a kind of, um, they're very exciting and you have no boundaries or something. They can be anything. They're big. How did you choose your subject or the model or whoever you, how did you choose if it's a self-portrait or someone from your family or maybe an image from the well, often when I'm at a kind of block, like often one is with painting, I'll sit and I'll write a series of questions like, what do you, I want to paint today? Who do I want to paint? What do I like? What am I thinking about? What am I reading? Quite, for me, it always has to be incredibly simple, like as clear as you can make it. And I think if you can't answer those questions, then you're not, they're not, if you work in vagueness, no one can understand. I can't say to you, oh, it's a bit this. It, it, it has to be clear. This is my niece. This is the cat. I, I can't work out of vagueness. So if I can answer the questions, then I can make the painting, if that makes sense. I was wondering how your niece feels about these paintings, because obviously this is about puberty, about insecurity as well. It's quite an open, um, you know, personal painting. She's got to be over 60 years old. You'll have to ask her tonight because she is an enigma to me as much as to, because um, I say, oh, do you like the paintings, Mom? And she goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. It's quite confronting seeing yourself in a room like this. She's quite confident. She goes to school dressed completely in vintage. She's very cool. She's, she's, a, she's an enigma to me. Does she like this? Does she? I think she does in her quiet way. I think she does quite like to be painted. But she's so much herself that they don't take anything from her, and that's important. And that she has her whole life to be whatever she'll be. I just want to ask you about more than the subject. Do you have to know the subject? Do you know the famous people? Do you have to know them? Or do you, do you have to talk to them before? No, no is the answer. There's, mm -hmm. Though increasingly I'm feeling that maybe I do is the answer and increasingly I'm feeling I have to know them but I kind of go back and forth and sometimes it's really exciting to take an image, find it on the street, tear it out of a magazine and suddenly that, the freedom of that is really exciting and so, and then I think no, no, it has to be my family, it has to be really felt and then suddenly I think, no, no, I like, so I'm kind of a bit schizophrenic in that, is the answer. So you create a kind of relationship between you and whatever you're painting, like there's something you like more, or like, like you said about the eyes, you felt the, no one's painted really like meaning it, so is there something else you care about particularly? Well, sometimes, you know, I'll see like an H&M advert and the tan lines will be really brilliant. I think, oh, I want to paint that. Or the contra, you know, it can come from lots of places or the way a bra sits on somebody's back. Or, I don't know, I get things from different things or my hair or a couple in the restaurant last night who were just engaged. I thought, how do you paint that? I think... And maybe you can't, but I like to think about 
what you can and can't paint. And I keep, I always think the way I paint is quite narrow and I keep wanting to make it bigger. So do you sketch, for example, after seeing this couple last night, do you sketch something? Or I you didn't. Just but then sometimes I go to the studio and try and remember it, like a really bad drawing, I try and remember it. And that's interesting to me, but no, no, they're and not. And it becomes eventually a painting? Probably or? never, but I okay. might find a photograph that looked like that, or I might set it up. I don't know. Okay. With the clarity that you were talking about when you're choosing your, your subject and you want to be very precise to avoid the vagueness and the confusion, do you do you look for maybe your viewers to have that experience when they see the paintings? So it's very precise or...? Um, I have to say I never think about a viewer and I think when I'm painting it is entirely for me. And sometimes I actually think, and this goes against probably everything else I've said, <laughs> that when I'm painting, the paintings are simply the byproduct of the actual painting. So I paint quite fast, so I'll be on a going like this, and then I'll go, <gasps> oh, you know, everybody who paints must know that thing of, oh, God, this is so brilliant, this is so amazing. And then the next day, it's like, you'd go, God, that's a piece of shit. <laughs> but somehow, I think of them, when I'm in the midst of painting, that they're simply things that fall from my hand, which is an odd, like leaves or something. So what advice would you give to people who paint? Are also struggling with painting. You're always going to struggle your whole life, and if you weren't struggling, you wouldn't be an artist. And I would also say it's one of the hardest things in the world. It's like, I think it's like dancing on a pin, and that's if you if you want to dance on a pin, that's a pretty exciting thing. And it's like climbing a mountain, and you know it's all the hard, everybody always goes, oh, it must be lovely to be an artist, what a lovely life. And I always think, <laughs> it's like endless days of nothing. And, but the other thing I would say is that it's like a metronome as well. If you set it in motion, just paint. Even if you can't paint, sit and paint. It's really important to just paint. However bad, you know, go in and paint your nose or a cat or whatever it is. And then you're because I can't think if I'm not painting. I can't think about painting unless I am painting. So you have this kind of routine to do it every single day? Yeah, I go every day and I'll sit and I'll paint. And often they're just shit, but it, through doing that I can think. And that's the only way I can. I can't think abstractly. Maybe some people can, I can't. I wish I were more confident public speaking. <laughs> I'm a better at thinking when I'm painting than I am at speaking. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, when you're talking about specifics and that, like, you're not able to be an abstract thinker, or also, like, you're not able to think about, uh, to work through your problems unless you have a very clear question on those things. Yeah. Is that also why you? Choose to paint like portraiture because there are specific people with specific personalities. Yeah, I'm a very literal thinker, I think. Mm -hmm. I and I like people. I want I don't want to paint anything other than people. But having said that, for me the paintings become quite abstract in the making. Maybe a little bit. Like that one. That became almost completely abstract yes. if below so but I can't think abstract anyway. But the paintings become quite abstract in the making because you're like, like I'll be painting a red line only, and I'm only thinking about the red line. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes. What do you think about that about this person? I think she's incredible. I think they're incredible. They, and all through my life, I've had that. You know where you. They make me feel very inadequate. I think they're, in but that's not that's a rubbish thing to say. But I think they're incredible. I think the intensity. I always wanted to be able to paint more slowly all my life, and I, I can't, unless you tied me to a tree maybe. But I can't paint. I can't do anything slowly. I can't cook slowly. I can't. That isn't in in me to do. I've tried and tried. So for me, that, like, Buddhist kind of contemplation beautiful it's 
um, very special. That's why, that's why your technique is like kind of fresh strokes. Everything is fast, I can't. And the faster I paint, the happier I am. I'm like a nut up, you know. <laughs> and I, it's like dancing, it's more physical than, but I've always wanted to be able to have contemplation. But it's very hard for me to get to that. You have to be yourself, I think, in art. I know that's a bit of a Sesame Street thing to say, but I think that is all there is. It's all you have is yourself, and you have to be yourself. Yeah, I think I do it sometimes in a really naff, awful way, you know, and I have to throw them out, you know, the <laughs> sad clown, or, um, and that's a bit tragic, but yeah. Or there's me, you know, me with a baby, you know, whatever it is, but I can't not paint what happens to me. It has to reflect. It's kind of a drawing theory. Yeah, you know. they are my life, the paintings, in, a, in many weird ways. I made a series of black paintings of me. You know, I mean, I never, I never shy away from the obvious, I think, because I like things to be tangible. That seems important. You have to paint what you can somehow articulate, even though I'm not very articulate. <laughs> I love, like, Roscoe for me is, you know, it's, I just, you know, I feel ill because it's so, the sheer emotion of it. Yeah. There's so much. I love Mondrian as well. I feel that, again, that kind of sheer intensity. <laughs> what was the average time you would say it took to make Probably anything from a day to a week. Or sometimes I'll paint a bit and go away. But they're fast. I paint fast. When I say fast, I mean fast. question because it's a big thing for a woman to have a child as a painter because it's such a monomaniacal kind of activity. When I got pregnant I started painting. I painted big as a student then had painted small for a long time then I started painting gigantically because I think partly as a kind of this isn't going to get me down kind of thing and um, that was really exciting and then having a child I think makes you more sensitive to the world in some ways, you know, more kind of peeled off. I think I was already a bit like that. It took another layer off. Um, and also, it's the most extraordinary experience, and so the painting of that, trying to paint how that felt was very meaningful for me. I mean, that, having her is the best thing that ever happened to me, so that's, you know, goes kind of without saying, but it was really great. I would recommend if you're interested in that as a there's a book about Paula Modison Beck, Becker, which is all about, you know the artist, she's amazing. She's a 1909-ish. Paula Modison Becker, she's got a big show in Copenhagen at the moment. She's an incredible painter. And they're all about thinking about motherhood and that's quite heartbreaking, but they're amazing, she's amazing. She's kind of like the Van Gogh woman for me, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Well, painting with this idea of life and time and continuity, do you also have had some like painting experiences with that, or do you end up I don't understand. That, like you, you, you've been mom for the years and yeah. your daughter and several people for the years, and it's a question about. It's a matter of time and continuity and how it goes through time and eventually time in humans is we end. Yeah. So have you ever done something related to that in your painting? Um, or have you ever thought of dying it? Oh yeah. 
I sure think about that. Um, <laughs> the best thing about painting, and this is the really great thing, is that when you're painting, you're absolutely, that time stops, you're at, that is the present tense. You know they talk about mindfulness and things, but actually painting, you're in the present tense, and that is the best thing about painting. And yet, you know, I can't express it, but yeah, I think about it a lot, so yeah. But painting is a great antidote. Can you say it as the, yeah, tonight? Because you can be, I'm now, when I'm painting, I'm now, and there's no, there's a brilliant Guston quote, you know it, when you start painting, the room is full of everybody, your friends, your family, everyone you've ever known, and one by one they leave. And when you're really painting, you're on your own. And I don't know, somehow that expresses it. I put it really badly, but if you read Night Studio, it's the best book about painting, being a painter. Mm -hmm. This is Ken Sutton, but do you have a studio? Or is very Yeah. It's, it's really nice. I walk there every day and it's, what I love is it's a bit like, it's filthy and there's stuff everywhere, it's disgusting, but it's absolutely mine and it, no one can come in there. And sometimes if I feel like the landlord has been in or something, I, I'm like an angry wasp, I buzz around going, oh, it's touched, of course he never has, but my radio is there, my CDs are there, it's, I love it. My ancient filthy kettle, everything is mine and like a dung beetle, I roll around happily, kind of, um, and all my books are there, and it's the place I, I like to be best. Even if I can sit there painting and weeping, which, you know, is okay, that's quite cathartic. Um, and I could be very depressed, you know, but it's great, I love it, I love my studio. And everybody, I think, who wants to paint needs a place like that, wherever it is, even a little room. I hate to paint at home, I have done it, but the distractions are too numerous and too terrible. You need a room of your own, however, wherever, whatever. But you're going to be an artist. When you're abroad? Sorry? When you're traveling abroad, you just I find traveling quite difficult. I'm not, I don't fly, um, so I travel by train, which I like, but I'm not a great, I'm not great on change. <laughs> <laughs> I can't work, no. Sometimes I take pictures, but I don't think I've ever used a picture I've taken traveling, but maybe, maybe of more. Sorry. Maybe this is personal, or maybe you don't want it to answer it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> but how was the first year when you gave birth, gave birth and yeah. started? It was hard. Uh, it was quite hard, actually. The painting... Funnily enough, the painting was really exciting because I felt like a new human being. Not something you'll necessarily experience, but <laughs> you do, you feel your body's different, you're different, you're somewhere else, and that's really exciting, a hard thing to get as an artist. To, it's like if you became a transsexual or something, you know what I mean? You'd become somebody else, somebody other. I quite was interested in that when I started out. Not being a transsexual, but painting people who were, because otherness is really interesting. I love Diane Albus. I love trying to imagine. For me, the most exciting thing is if you could imagine what it was like to be somebody else. I think, you know, just on the tube or on the bus or wherever, to understand just for a moment to get outside of your head, and that's transcendence for me, to imagine that. Um, and I suppose, if I'm honest, it's a good question because that's what my work is about. If, if I tried to explain, it was trying just for one moment to imagine that. Um, are there any like books or uh, other artists' music or exhibitions or any experiences that have really defined you as an artist? Okay. Um, I don't know, that's a very no, no, it's a good question. question. I saw Diane Albus in a lecture at art school when I was 19. Mm -hmm. The one, you know, the couple on the bench with a hot dog, do you know the image? Yeah. And it was like a revelation. It was like, I couldn't believe somebody could make an image like, 
she just, even now, she gives me goose pimples. I think there's no one like her. I, I, she sees what I imagine seeing. Or, I don't know, they're just, for me, and I did paintings of myself as the twins and stuff. I mean, it was so, see, because for me, to see something, I just want to be it. So my only way of understanding it, anything, whether it's life or anything, is somehow to paint it. To, to own it is to paint it. To be it is to paint it. And maybe that sounds a bit grandiose. I think it maybe does, but that's the only way I can say it. But as to music, I've been listening to the same album for 25 years, probably. Joni Mitchell, Bob, <laughs> <laughs> Fiona Apple. They're not, I'm not, I think I just listen over and over. They become the background. Um, and I read every day, all day. I love to read. When I'm not painting, I love to read. Um, and often the same people, but I love books. What do you think about the commercialization of the art that is very frequently in the contemporary society, and in particular about the big price in the auction, with this big uh, selling? Um, I can honestly say, and this isn't disingenuous, I never think about that stuff. Okay. I don't. I sort of think not in a, because people talk about it, but I never think, and maybe that's a luxury I don't, I have to not think about it, but there's so much else to think about, and I worry about a lot of stuff that is nothing, <laughs> like a bowler, you know, I mean, I don't know, I'm joking, but I'm not, because I'm so busy fretting about something else, I, that never comes into it, truthfully, I'm, I don't find it very interesting. No, I'm saying it's established? maybe a luxury, sorry. Yeah, yeah. How did you become established as an artist? Like, uh, how did um, that uh, what happened? Okay, I was a student and I loved art school. It was like the best thing, especially post-grad. I loved it. Um, then I left art school. I had no money. And then I was in a, like a student show and people saw the work and then I... Quite a lot happened from that, and that was really exciting. Still didn't have any money, but it was exciting. And then I got a show at, in London, and that was really exciting. And then bit by bit, things happened. I always have an ambivalent relationship to showing because everybody wants, you want to show, it's a really weird thing, like those self-portraits. Sort of, I'd like to show you them now because I'm quite excited about them, but also, I find showing quite painful and exposing and anxiety-inducing, so it's a kind of... So I, I would lie if I said I'd, I want to show everybody everything, but also I'm terrified, so it's a kind of... And it, weirdly, that gets worse the older I get. You'd think it would get easier, but it doesn't. It gets harder. So would you prefer your paintings to just be in homes and to, for people to really, like, be with and sit with? No, I mean, I'm not that pure. I want to show everybody. I mean, I, I'd like, I would, if I had my mobile phone, I'd be showing you the new paintings because I think it's an irresistible impulse and then I'd be disappointed because I'd look at them and think, actually, they're shit. So I can't win. It's a, I think it's a, honestly. I mean, I can't remember having done... I mean, I'm not being funny, I can't think... You know, sometimes you do projects and you think... No, I'm not very good at... Um, I always think it gets like homework, you know, you start thinking, oh, I have to do that. But I have done projects, but not, not for theatre or anything. But maybe it would be good, I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm open to ideas, but then... I like best to be painting on my own in my studio. <laughs> yeah, you'll meet her. She's she's trying to decide what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
very important. Okay. Um, one last question is, sorry, I'm just going to ask you I mean, just for myself, I think that painting is sometimes really selfish because it's just for myself and I don't think about other people, like you say, um, sometimes. What do you think is the artist's role in society? Like, what is their... Well, we're useless now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. I mean, you think, what am I doing? But then, I'm trying to think about that. Uh, well, I mean, I wrestle with this all the time, you know what I mean? What use am I? I wouldn't be much use in Africa helping with Ebola either because I'm so afraid. But um, no, I'm joking. But I agree. I think there are times when you think I should be doing something more. Yeah. But then, but then maybe. You love pain, then you can buy time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. I don't think yeah. we have a. Sorry, I wanted to follow up on the challenge. The same. I think it's really interesting describing the process of which you paint and how you don't paint with the viewer, you paint with yourself, but then you know, you appear or you your works, yeah. and you said that it, it's kind of contradictory to how then you do become slightly concerned with how people are viewing your works. Yeah. Do you ever have like, really adverse reactions to, to others' perceptions of, of your work, or do you tend to just listen to them and then that's, that's all? <laughs> No, I think I tend to agree with them usually, which is quite painful, like a show I did in New York, somebody wrote about it, and I, I, I didn't mean to, but I brooded about it a lot, and I liked her, and I sort of thought she was really interesting. And I kept thinking about it, thinking, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, and in a funny way, I think the new work I've made, since then has kind of, I find it hard I like criticism. I was one of those children who liked a hard teacher who was always mean to me. You know, I, I like that. My mum's quite mean to me about my work. She's always going, why the trips? I don't like, you know. <laughs> and so I have a tendency to agree with the critique rather than, um, but then I think there is a bit of me that inside is going, well, I was always the messy, smelly kid. I don't care. I'll just go on being that. You know what I mean? I, the outsider is always in you. So. Um, I'll always be that kid. You can't get rid of it. So maybe that's your savior as an artist in a funny way. <laughs>